Hi, my name is Uncle Don and you are listening to This Thing in the Mud. A few days back, I had come across a post on one of Nigeria's popular blogs about a guy who bought, I think, the 2003 Mercedes-Benz. And out of sheer joy, he shared the news with his girlfriend. In her response, the lady surprisingly wasn't impressed because the car wasn't worth the noise that he was making. In a series of voice notes, she basically said to him that if it was the latest model of a car, like a 2022 Range Rover, then it wouldn't be okay to share the news with people. Let's just say it was embarrassing to her for the guy to make too much noise because of a 2003 Mercedes-Benz. And she said that she had been on better cars. Hmm. Now that last part sounded like shooting yourself in the leg. Now when you first hear of this, it sounds like a joke. But it is real. Of recent, there has been a constant debate on who gets to bring in what in a relationship and whose responsibility it is to do A, B, C, D. The conversation has been endless as new and similar topics keep piling on the daily. Just check the blogs and you will be in awe. And on Twitter, that place is fire. While I believe the Nigerian Youth for Society is a more sophisticated one where everyone is questioning and most people are becoming more liberal, the truth is that even the quest for heaven comes with a price. And most times, we don't look at that aspect of things, where we sacrifice the simple and important things for the mundane. I wanted to tag this podcast, Material Relationship in Niger, but then again, I realized that it is not a topic that one can exhaust in a single day. I wanted to hear more from some of my friends and contributors, so I reached out to Ejiro and Margaret and asked them this very simple question. Are relationships in Nigeria more fickle nowadays? I mean, are they less loyalty, less compromising, less patient, more selfish, more materialistic, and most importantly, more egocentric? This is what they had to say. I say a big yes, (laughs) a very big yes. Almost everyone right now is consciously and unconsciously guilty of being materialistic or and less open to compromise i would say um this present generation that we have we've seen um a higher level of materialism and it is highly driven by social media unconsciously um we have people nowadays who uh, on um, first contact they're actually attracted to people on the outward appearance it is very very common right now i don't know who's going to tell me that uh, um it took them uh I mean, they connected with you on on the first uh, day based on your behavior no it usually starts from the outward appearance you have a guy falling over a girl because she's well dressed you know well you know presented and that's the first point of contact you know because you've already imagined how picture perfect you're going to be so many people particularly really young people that are coming up kind of base their reality on those things they see on social media you know, and that, that kind of drives or shapes their worldview. It is important to establish the fact that my guest would agree to the assertion that we have a major problem. But let's be more practical and listen to this story of why an individual can be seen as materialistic in a relationship. I once uh, dated a guy and during the course of the relationship, I never asked him for anything. And by anything, I mean any financial <laughs> incentive. I never, I never did that. And I actually really never even thought about it. Like, as a big deal. It never occurred to me. I mean, like, 
maybe something was missing or I was supposed to be expecting something but I the relationship just went on that way so um along the line we broke up and I'm having discussions with my friends and at the end of the discussion I come to realize that looking back <laughs> I could actually term this person actually my friends would term this person as being stingy because as much as I didn't ask he didn't bother offering to give to me which of course back then was not a big deal to me because I didn't even notice I think that would be like a focal point for me I would like to look out for that aspect in a guy now I don't know if that will make me become materialistic but i know it's going to make me be uh make me become more self-conscious about the financial part you know i'm just giving an instance of possibly how i could have moved on from that relationship so getting on to the next person i would actually be expecting you know just as a measure like okay can he can he you know be more generous you know how how much can he release how much money can he release how much can he spend on me which of course might present me as being materialistic but it just came as a result of my experience so that's uh, that's a reason why someone can be someone can come off as being materialistic social media is the new global village of everything but first why some guys would have an opinion about that particular story we can all agree that social media is a major player in building or breaking relationships. These are typical scenarios. We've had um, different incidences where people have, have claimed houses that are not theirs or have put on certain kind of life and come out to say, oh, it was just all a charade. Um, it was, I was just trying to put up appearances. The world has evolved. A lot of things have changed society has changed social media we have a lot of people seeing a lot of things on the internet things like this that we're not really out there people are now putting it more out there and of course you as a spectator would consciously or unconsciously once again want to experience what it is that they are, they are, they are displaying it has kind of shaped how you know men and women now so not just only men men and women basically how we approach relationship um it has driven this materialistic culture or idea in the hearts of young people i have this favorite uh, youtube couple risa and kwan and milo and hazel just a few days ago i was going through their videos of valentine's day Men, the men went overboard with their gifts as in the surprise that they did for their for their babes it was so interesting i loved it and imagine if i'm with someone and because i i enjoyed what i saw i'll be expecting that kind of treatment from my own better half you know but uh, it's not supposed to be like that but you know subconsciously this stuff is is now in my heart this is what i'm expecting so social media has really influenced it does one's family or parent have a hand to play in relationships becoming more fickle i mean the older generation when i was barely i think i was just barely a teenager in secondary school I, one of my friend's mom actually you know sort of had this advice session with us and for lack of uh, um, exact terms in which she used i would just some really say she said we should marry to rich so yeah someone like me not being able to balance that advice i mean i can't really say that advice was bad it, it wasn't bad it really wasn't bad it was a necessary one but um if i have like a narrow mindset going with that mindset whenever i meet someone i'm always going to be focused on the on the on the on that aspect of the person this person really i understood where she was coming from 
and i feel like the older generation have kind of um imbibed this kind of advice and instruction on us they flow with it they they I mean, this is what was. This is what we were told. Because we even have some women. They'll be like, "Oh, I don't want you to go through what I went through with your father. I need you to, you know, things like that influence certain people. Because you don't even know where they are coming from. You don't know what background they are coming from. But because they are trying to escape that, they're now so, you know, fixated on, on. Um, um, I want someone that is rich. I want someone that can spend. In the past, I feel like our our parents or our predecessors. They were more loyal, you know, men and women. Um, they were more loyal, uh, and I, I would I would say also because that exposure wasn't so much there. You know, we found our mothers, aunties, and you know the older ones sticking with their partners, regardless of what it was. And I think also because the patriarchal system then was re- it's still it's still here now. But now, you, there's a lot of liberalism, you know, people are more enlightened, people are more knowledgeable, and I feel like that again, you know, is, is shaping the outlook of life. In the 1960s up until the 80s, we had the sexual revolution, also known as a time of sexual liberation, a social movement that challenged the traditional codes of behavior related to sexuality and interpersonal relationships throughout the United States and the developed world. Is this the case for now where individuality and access to information, self-awareness, is slowly creeping into the Nigerian scene? Is this making it a lot more harder for relationships to thrive? Or is it positioning relationships for the better? There's this guy on Twitter, Shola, (laughs) Jay something, he tweets about guys you know telling guys advising guys not to see, you see things like oh don't send don't send pocket money to girlfriends or if the girl is not responding to you you move on you know she doesn't care now as much as this advice too are valuable but they just have this potential for a negative impact in the sense that we have guys now who are now less open to compromise we now have guys who don't even want to you know with that kind of with that kind of um um feed into your brain into your mind once a girl just does mini shakara for you you don't want to compromise you don't want to you know shake your ground you just be like i beg i'm moving on so we now have guys that now have that uh strong mind they don't care they don't give a hoot unlike before you know guys actually i think some guys even actually enjoyed the chase you know they actually enjoyed the chase but now hmm, uh, guys now have zero patience <laughs> they don't even have the strength and you have them being so so conscious in the relationship because now people are now very selfish self-conscious and self-centered they're just all about themselves before it used to be about um each other so it's like, um, if if my baby is not doing this, then um, I shouldn't be with the person. We used to accommodate mistakes before. We used to accommodate wrongdoings. You know, grow together. Now, of course, you're you're like, no, you can't take it. I mean, people are not taking it. I'm out. So everybody's now very you know have this we now have this fickle love that is easily broken by practically anything so yeah people are now very you know very materialistic and very um less open to compromise and and a lot women have been commodified if you look at popular culture um music videos the lyrics of songs nigerian songs for example they talk about you know flashing the bling blings um the lamborghinis the bugattis and the prados you know uh how they they, they place money on on women with the money they get you know any kind of woman that they want so i mean popular culture has also driven that materialism that it's really all about the money as a guy or a babe if you once you have you know that flashy car um money to spend you can go to the club and buy drinks for everybody then you have the best girl or you have the best guy you know and that doesn't really tell the full story 
everybody wants to get rich so very quickly nobody wants to really put in that work get their hands dirty you know and 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 our celebrities are not helping because really they're not really showing us the other side of the story they only give us the beautiful rosy paradise we want to see that other side because i feel like that's kind of the thing that motivates that will be what will motivate young people you know to say oh you know beyond all this flashy flashy they also have their struggles they also have their challenges they have their day-to-day chores and tasks that they have to go through so all of these things popular media social media has shaped you know the world view of what a relationship should be or look like and it's centered on materialism um a guy that can afford the to buy a lady a phone or a, a lady that is able to you know drive in the in, in a very big car with with her boyfriend you know and things like that of course there are a few exceptions there are still some very good persons out there who still believe so much in love who are so who still believe in you know being loyal to a partner regardless of what they have but i mean those those group are in a minority they say that there's no smoke without fire and in many cases identifying the root cause of a problem is always the first step in solving the problem the one thing my guests have mostly emphasized on is social media the one place where new cultures are formed it is unlikely that this sort of problem can be resolved in one sitting but the one thing i know is that if we keep having conversation of this sort and backed by meaningful actions there is bound to be a glimpse of light at the end of the tunnel to my two guests i say a big thank you for offering your two cents of knowledge and to whom it may concern i certainly hope this helps If you enjoyed this week's episode of This Thing in the Mud, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and where you get all your podcasts from. Like and drop me a comment at Uncle Don on Twitter and on Instagram. See you next week. All my love.